Students get confused on a problem like this because they don't do three things very well. The first thing is to label their diagram based on the information that you are given. So I don't care if it's a test or homework, when you're given all this written information, make sure you apply it to your diagram. So therefore you have a visual understanding of what this is saying. So the first one, PA and PB are tangent to the circle. Now, the next thing is remembering, the thing that people students get wrong is remembering your rules. So there's a lot of rules that we happen that happen when we have lines that are tangent. So you can see here, this line PA is tangent to the circle. Well, what is one thing that I know that happens when we have a line tangent to the circle? At the point where it is tangent, it creates a 90 degree angle. Now, immediately in my brain, that also reminds me, whenever I'm thinking about 90 degree angles, I'm always thinking about Pythagorean theorem and sine, cosine, and tangent. Meaning, I'm gonna wanna see, can I maybe create a triangle that's gonna allow me to be able to find some missing parts I'm assuming that we're going down uh, missing parts of this figure. So we have right triangle here and a right triangle there. Um, now also, what do we recognize about tangent lines is whenever we have two tangent lines from the same point, we know that those two lines are going to be equal in length. So now I can do a little tick mark and say whatever PA is, that has to be the exact same for PB. Now again, this all comes from my understanding of knowing the rules with tangent lines. So that's very, very important. That's a mistake that students will, will make is they just forget the rules. So make sure you refresh yourself of the rules of tangent, also secant lines, you know, whatever else you are going through. The next one says line OA um, is equal to six. So OA is equal to six and it is the radius. So that's very important because if OA is the radius, then we also know that OB also has the radius. So that is going to be a six as well. Um, and then it says measure of angle APB is going to be 42 degrees. Okay, so now what I've done is I've at least taken all this information, right, that I was provided and I drew it on my board, okay? I have everything now in front of me. So now I'm looking at this. And again, I'm going back to that first thought. I had to add in some of this information that was not provided here, but I knew it because I knew the, the rules of tangent lines and also with circles. So I was able to add in a little bit extra stuff. Now, that extra tip though, that made me think about this, whenever I see 90 degrees, I just immediately think to try to create a triangle. And I recognize here, I can take the center of the circle and connect it to this point over here. Now, the important thing as well is with tangent lines, when you have two tangent lines and you take a line from the center to that point, that is now going to create a angle bisector. So now it's gonna cut this angle into half. So therefore it's gonna be 21 degrees and 21 degrees. Now, here's very, very important. Recognize here, I have two right triangles. Now these are the same, so it says find PA and PB. I only need to find one of these because I know that the measures are gonna be exactly the same. So we've already coupled the first two mistakes. The third mistake that students will do is they'll try to do the calculations based on this. Now again, remember, I said create that right triangle. So what I wanna do, rather than trying to do the calculations looking at here, I got all the information out, I added more based on my understanding of tangent lines and, and circles. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my calculations over here with a fresh triangle. Okay, so you see how this is a, so much easier to kind of like represent and understand. I don't care which triangle you take, this one or this one or that orientation, but I just create it like this. It's kind of like when you're first learning about how to solve the missing side of a triangle. It's that perfect right triangle looking just like that. It's much easier for me to be able to compute something like this than when it's unmixed into a problem like that. All right, so I'm looking for this missing length I don't have enough information for the Pythagorean theorem, but I do recognize I do have enough information for sine, cosine, tangent. And if we look at this angle, we now are dealing with a opposite side and the adjacent side. So in my head, that goes into tangent. Okay, so remember the tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent based on this angle. So that's opposite over adjacent and this is a tangent of 21 degrees. So now to solve for X, we never solve for X when it's in the denominator, right? We gotta get it off there. So to get it off there, all I'm simply gonna do is multiply by an X on both sides. And then I'm going to have to go ahead and, um, so therefore I'll have an X tangent of 21 degrees equals six. And then if I wanna go ahead and solve for X, I now have to divide by tangent of 21 degrees. Okay, so now I'm not in the classroom, so I don't have my calculator with me. And so fine, that is going to be your exact answer. If you want the decimal equivalent, just make sure your calculator is in degree mode and you can go ahead and type that right into your calculator and you'll get this answer. Now, a lot of you forgot the rules of tangent and of circles. So if you want a video that's gonna go over those exact things that you need to know, then check out the next video I have for you here. Or if you want more examples, then check out the videos I have for you down below. Cheers.